This is a video on how to be a gentleman online. This is from the book The Art of Manliness by Brett and Kate McKay. This is from the end of the chapter, The Gentleman. This is all raw information that I'm going to read directly from the book so I don't miss any information. Just take notes if you want. Modern technology and the new rules of etiquette. Modern technology presents the contemporary gentleman with the kind of etiquette pitfalls Emily Post could never have imagined. Just as World War I was especially bloody because the artillery had progressed faster than the development of new military tactics, technology presents an unmannered minefield because etiquette has not kept pace with its development. You can help bring some civility to the modern age by adhering to the following guidelines. The cell phone. Good manners are made up of petty sacrifices. Ralph Waldo Emerson. Don't talk on your cell phone when you have a captive audience. No one in the plane, train, restaurant, gym or store want to be held hostage to your conversation. Don't use your phone in any place in which people expect a certain atmosphere. There are certain situations in which people expect a respectful quiet to prevail. A cell phone should not burst this bubble of ambience. Thus, you should never use your cell phone at funerals, weddings, classes, church services, movies, plays, museums, etc. By even allowing your cell phone to ring, never mind speaking into it, you announce to the world that your conversation is more important than the rumination of everyone else in the room. It is the height of arrogance. Don't talk or answer your cell phone while talking to anyone in person. There are no exceptions to this rule. Don't answer it when you're talking to someone at a party. Don't answer it when you're eating at a restaurant. Don't answer it when you're making a purchase or ordering food. The server or clerk is not a robot. Each is a human being deserving of your respect. Don't use a Bluetooth headset unless you're driving. You've seen the headset people. They look like they just walked out of Star Trek. Headsets distance and disconnect you from the people around you. Don't lose respect by walking around with a headset 24-7. Keep it in the car where it belongs. Do use a simple ringtone. Personalised ringtones are everywhere. But be aware of what ringtones say about you. Jenna Jamison's moan tone shows you have no taste. Pop music ringtones show that you are still in 10th grade. Stick with something simple. Don't use text messages to convey important ideas. This includes texting to break up, to declare your love, or to curse someone out. Don't text in all caps, or use multiple explanation marks. If you're that excited, you should be calling the person, not texting. Don't expect a response to your text message right away. And if you don't get one, don't text follow-up messages, asking the person if they received your first one. Don't check your text messages while at dinner. Checking it out at a store, or conversing with another person. The cracked berry habit is tough to break, but people deserve your undivided attention. Now for the internet. The beauty of the internet is that it allows for free flowing communication in an unprecedented way. But in the euphoria of this new freedom, we have forgotten the importance of common courtesies. Great accessibility to others does not negate the need for respect. Even when interacting as anonymous, disembodied versions of ourselves, the rules of civility still apply. Blogs and forums. Never say something to a stranger on the internet that you would not say to a stranger in person. The internet provides a cloak of anonymity, behind which people feel free to say whatever they want. Yet the words which we both write and speak are our creations. We must take ownership of them. Never write something you would not be proud to have attached with your real name. Before you hit send, stop and ask yourself, would I use these words if this person was standing right in front of me? If not, reword your communication. Don't attack people personally. Blogs and websites provide forums for the respectful exchange of ideas. You should thus never personally attack the people behind those ideas. Blog users will sometimes make a valid comment only to end with, you're an idiot, and some will dispense with the valid argument part altogether. Using personal attacks adds nothing to the conversation and only shows that you do not have anything insightful or intelligent to offer. Don't just tear things down. Many of an internet user's energy is devoted to poking holes in every idea that crosses their path. But cynicism is easy. Chronic debunkers don't do any of the hard work it takes to create something and then they barely lift a finger to tear things down. There's nothing wrong with criticism, 
but be constructive with your comments. If you have nothing substantive to add to the conversation, then it's best to cheese it. Don't use excessive vulgarity. Nothing shows a juvenile mentality and a lack of class like excessive vulgarity. While salty language has been on the rise in normal conversations as well, the proliferation of profanity on the internet is excessive. Because of the information glut on the internet, men feel they must pepper their comments with over-the-top language to keep them from being lost in the shuffle. But if such additions are added to get attention, you clearly did not have anything meaningful to say in the first place. Now for email. The modern gentleman knows how to deftly use email. He recognises that it is a tool to be used and is not a slave to checking it constantly. Gentlemen show their email recipients the same respect they would give them if they were meeting face to face. Be concise and to the point. Don't make emails longer than they should be. People use email to save time. So writing your magnus opus in an email message will probably irritate people. As a general guideline, try to keep emails shorter than five sentences. Use proper spelling and grammar. Every piece of communication you send out to the world is a reflection of you. An email filled with spelling and grammatical mistakes will leave a bad impression. It tells the reader that they're not important enough for you to run a simple spell check. Show your readers respect by proofreading your emails before you hit send. Respond within 24 hours. If there's a question that you don't know the answer to and will take some time to research, go ahead and send a response saying you'll get back to them soon with the answer. Answer all questions and preempt future questions. Failing to answer all the questions in an email faces your contact to email you again. Don't waste people's time by making them write another email. Also, if appropriate, try to preempt other possible questions in your email. It will save your correspondent time and they'll appreciate your thoughtfulness. Make it personal. Show your contact that you have them in mind when writing your email. Address them by name and add information which will give your email a personal touch. Do not write in all capitals. Writing an email in all caps indicates shouting. This can irritate people and you'll get a response you probably weren't looking for. Gentlemen don't shout in normal conversation, so don't do it in your email either. Don't overuse reply to all. Use this function only if your message needs to be seen by each person who received the original message. If you use this function all the time, you will irritate people by filling up their email box with needless responses. Don't use abbreviations or emoticons. LOL, WTF, THX, for your HLP. You're not 15 anymore, so stop writing your emails like you are. A gentleman uses proper language when speaking and writing. Don't forward chain letters or stupid jokes. Nothing says, I have a brain that functions at six guinea pig power, like forwarding chain letters. Gentlemen recognise that email chain letters are dumb, childish and a huge waste of time for the recipient. Use discretion with what you put in an email. Don't put anything that would embarrass you if it went public. In just one click, your reputation as a gentleman can be ruined. Now for Facebook or just any other social media. Gentlemen only use Facebook. MySpace is for cads and scallywags. Don't poke. Would a gentleman poke someone in real life? Of course not so don't do it online. Poking is not an acceptable form of flirtation. Neither are the other actions that some Facebook applications allow you to do. If you want to show someone you're interested in them, man up and send a private message to them. Better yet, call them. Use discretion when wall posting. Do not use Facebook's wall to have entire conversations. You look like a boob if you do. Use wall posts for well wishes and hellos. Also, do not post anything too personal on a person's wall. Remember, walls are public spaces, so treat them as such. Finally, use appropriate language when writing on someone else's wall. Avoid off-colour comments and gossip, and check for spelling mistakes. Just think, what kind of impression do I want to give others? Keep photos of yourself to a minimum, especially photos taken of yourself by yourself by holding the camera away from your face. A gentleman is modest and discreet. Hundreds of photos of yourself reveal your vanity. Remove compromising photos of yourself. If you're a true gentleman, you shouldn't have to worry about any incriminating photos of you winding up on Facebook. However, if a photo of you in a compromising pose does slip by, ask the poster to take it down. At least remove the tag of you in the photo. Do not break up with a woman through Facebook. Only a 
being who belonged to the cult of non-virality, would use Facebook's relationship status feature to break up with their girlfriend. If you are not man enough to look a woman in the eyes and tell her it's over, you weren't man enough to be in a relationship to begin with. Take it easy on the applications. Don't overload your profile with unnecessary applications such as super poke, food fight, etc. Also, be careful with the kind of applications you install on your profile. A gentleman avoids applications that demonstrate a lack of judgment or maturity. That means no positions or be a wars applications. Join Facebook groups with discretion. The groups you choose to join, even as a joke, say a lot about you. Use discretion. Additionally, keep the number of groups you join to a minimum. Don't friend someone you don't know or hardly know. Facebook has degraded the meaning of friend. A gentleman respects semantics and only includes people in his Facebook network that are truly his friends. Don't be afraid to say no to random people who try to befriend you. Your favourites should be just that. Listing your favourites means listing the things you like the best, not every single thing you've ever listened to, seen or read. Having a huge list of favourites shows you don't have enough taste to pick what things you like the best. Being ultra inclusive doesn't make you seem cultured. It makes you seem insecure. Respond to people's Facebook wall posts and messages. Respond within 24 hours. If you feel overwhelmed with Facebook messages, let others know you prefer to be contacted by email. Thank you for watching. Please like if you learned something and subscribe to keep learning. If you want to read the whole book, then that will be top of the description. If you haven't watched my other videos on this book or the next video on this book is out, then the playlist will be on screen now. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.